The catch-all tray is one of the best beginner projects for beginner CNC users. It's one of those projects that is really simple and basic at its fundamental core, but it's also one of those projects that allows you to progressively get more complicated in your designs, allowing you to utilize more of the tools and more of the functions of whatever program it is that you're using, ultimately allowing you to become more confident as a CNC woodworker. In this video, I'm going to share with you step by step on how I created this catch all tray. I'm going to let you decide though whether or not you want to keep it simple, just a simple catch all tray with just the pockets for the essential items that you carry every day. Or if you want to step out of your comfort zone, just like I did, you can go ahead and follow along with the inlay portion as well. So if this is something that interests you, you're going to want to stick around. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. I've been putting off making myself a catch all tray for so long, I finally started cleaning out some of this hardwood and I decided that this is a great opportunity to go ahead and make one for myself. Of course, rather than keeping it simple, I decided to step out of my comfort zone and make a inlay catch-all tray. And because I like to incorporate patriotic themes in most of my builds, I'm going to make this a come and take it catch-all tray. I think that the come and take it flag is perfect for this catch-all tray because it's going to hold all the things that I need to take on my day. Before jumping into this video, I do want to say thank you very much for all the support. I really cannot be doing this without you guys. So again, thank you very much. If you are getting value out of the channel or out of the videos, make sure to like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That really does help me out. And if you want to go ahead and leave me a comment below, I do try to get to all those comments as soon as I can. Even if it's an emoji, that helps out with the algorithm and gets this information and this content out to more people. Lastly, if you want to also become a patron, I do have a Patreon account. The link is in the description below, and I'm more than happy to provide more content to all those patrons. Thank you again for all your support, and let's go ahead and jump into this video. There are a lot of videos out there on how to do a glue up, so I won't spend much time on this. I will say that this one tabletop bandsaw did an amazing job on this maple material. I just took it slow and it didn't burn, but my table saw did burn the wood. So just keep that in mind. Also, this one joiner is still amazing after almost a year after setting it up. I haven't had to reset anything. I haven't even had to reset the fence and I get perfect edges each time. This is a perfect beginner joiner for a small shop or for a beginner. Apparently I'm slowly collecting the entire WEN tabletop lineup because I also have the WEN tabletop drill press. If you're a new CNC user and don't have any clamps to secure your material just yet, or you're in need of some good double-sided tape, x fasten double-sided tape is amazing and the way to go. You'll see later on how strong this really is. Once your material is secured to the waste board, run a surfacing job. I have a video on how to do this if you're unsure on how to. It's linked in the description below. This method works 100% every single time. Just repeat the process until the entire board is flat. Once you're done, flip it over and do it again. All the tools I use for this project are linked in the description below. By using the links, it's just another way that you can help support the channel. Once the board was flat, I ran an edge on the joiner and use that edge to run along the table saw fence to cut the size. And no project is complete without a little sanding. Now that the tray is built and ready to be carved, I want to let you guys know that I started with the inlay portion first because that is the hardest and most complicated part of this project. If I was to mess up, I would rather mess up early on in the project rather than almost being done and I mess up on the inlay at the very end. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do the inlay portion first. Just wanted to let you know. If you're not going to do the inlay, that's okay. Go ahead and use the timestamps to jump to the portion where I just show you the design portion of the pockets and then go ahead and jump into the tool paths. All right, jumping into Carbide Create, the very first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your job. In this particular case, I have a 13 by 3 8 uh, wide material, and the height of this material is 10.6250 or 10 and 5 8. And the thickness for this material came out to be 5 8 as well. And the material is going to be hardwood. So go ahead and click OK once you have that entered. So now the grid here is the actual representation of our material. This is the actual size of the material that we're car carving into. If you're going to go ahead and start this from scratch and if you don't want to purchase the uh, file off of Etsy, that's all fine. Just go ahead and create vectors to the size and to the design that you want. All I did was come over here to the create vectors and just create the shapes that I want uh, according to the size that I want. I measured everything prior to coming into the design. I measured my wallet. I measured the watch. I measured 
my knife, everything that I wanted to put into this tray, I measured. That way I made vectors large enough to hold what I wanted want to hold. Let me jump in here real quick and just explain that I'm going to show you some quick tips on how to create and design your catch-all tray. As I was editing this video, I completely skipped over all the tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you. So I hope these help you design a custom catch-all tray for yourself. All right, so it's just some of the quick tips and tools that I use to be able to align everything here. I think everything looks better when it's aligned proportional. The first thing is that you can see is that the vectors are aligned evenly here on the top. So what I want to do is, is when you have a location set for a vector, any other vector that you want to align, you want to have it selected, then hold shift and then select the correctly aligned vector. Come over here to the align vectors options. And then you're going to want to align vertically. And that now aligns this vector to the top of this one. One thing to notice is that the size of these vectors are the same. The height here is four inches and it is also four inches here on this other one. One other tip is that you want to align this particular vector in the center of these two here for the phone and for the watch. And to be able to do that, let's say I like this location here, but it's not centered now. Select the one that you want to center, the whole shift and then select the vector that you want to have it centered to align. And again, you're going to do it vertically. And the last tip that I want to share with you is how to correctly place the circle for the iWatch uh, charger. What I did is I measured the location of the circle part of the charger that still allowed for my watch to sit within this pocketed area. And I got a measurement of 4.375. And so to be able to correctly place the circle part of the charger in my wood or in my material, I created this extra vector here that extends or is the width of 4.3750. And then I created the correctly sized circle, which, which is a radius of 0.5625. So at the edge of this vector here, this line here of this vector is the location of where I want the circle to start. This is the outermost part of the circle. So once I created a circle with the radius of 0.5625, which is the correct radius for the charger, I grabbed the node here and then attached it to this vector there. And because this alignment vector is the same height as the actual pocket where my watch will lay, I know that this circle is still centered within the actual pocket for the watch. So I hope that makes sense guys. These are just a couple of different tricks that I used to be able to get correct alignment of the, of the design. Let's just go ahead and jump into the tool pass because I think the design part is kind of easy. You just design it as you'd like. The very first toolpath that I ran was the pocket, the advanced V-carve pocket to be able to hold everything. And as you can see here, I have for my phone, my wallet, my watch, and my keys, for example, or anything else. The other ones that I did create were these small rectangles here that intersect these uh, vectors. This one is for my phone and this one is for my watch. The reason why I did that was so that my charging cable could have an exit path to uh, be able to lay flat within the material and exit out of the material easily. Um, had I not had this, I would have to have the cable on top of my material. And although that works, I just wanted to take it a little bit extra further and have a little nice exit slot for my cable. And so when we see the simulation, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to just simply use an advanced V carve to achieve this. And these are the settings. I use a 201 to pocket the majority of the, the material. I used a plunge rate of 70, a feed rate of 80, RPM at 18,000, a depth per pass was 0 0.060, and my step over is 0.125. And then I came back in with the 60 degree V bit to kind of give it a chamfer edge or that nice uh, V carve edge. And so the step over is 0 0.008, depth per pass is 0.1, the plunge and feed rate were 80, 90 RPM at 18,000. Since I'm not carving anything with detail, I'm not trying to be detailed here. I just want to carve through this. I did feel that it was okay to speed this process up and everything turned out just fine. The starting depth is going to be at the top of the material and the max depth that I went was 0.2. So that's the very first one. So let's take a look at the simulation now. Okay, so you see here, these are going to be the slots for my uh, phone, watch, keys or wallet and a knife down here. But I want to share with you the slot for the cables. And you can see here that that's exactly, it has an entryway here into the phone area and it completely exits out. And so my cable has a way to lay entirely out of the material. Let's talk about the watch next. The radius of the iWatch charging section or circle 
is 0.5625. That's the value or the number that you're going to want to remember. And I also created another rectangular vector similar to up here for the cable for my iWatch uh, charger. So that way the cable can lay within the slot and exit out of the tray as well. You're gonna see here in a moment that initially I did not do this, but I did not like how the cable laid on the, on the tray. So I decided that the best route to go is to create a pocket or a slot for that cable. And so let's talk about those tool paths real quick. For the charging circle, I just used a 201 end mill. My plunge rate was 15, my feed rate was 90, RPM was 18,000. The max depth was 0.250 from the top of the pocket. So I zeroed my Z0 at the top of the pocketed area. So that's why I only went down 0.250 and the starting depth is still at zero. Because I created the pocket for the cable after I had created the circle, I went in here and just replicated the same starting depth and the max depth. So the starting depth for the pocket for the cable is at the top of the material within the pocket, the watch pocket, and then also the max depth is 0.250. The reason why I did two tool paths instead of one is because I decided to carve this pocket with my 1 8 end mill instead of my 201 or my quarter inch. And the speeds are 18 for my plunge, my feed rate is 60, RPM at 18,000. So let's take a look at that simulation real quick. So that's what it's going to look like within the pocket. So let me go ahead and activate everything now. So again, you have the pockets here for everything that I'm going to hold, but within this watch pocket, it is recessed in a little bit deeper, so it's going to allow for the cable to sit within this pocket. Let's go ahead and talk about the inlay now. For the inlay, I just followed the exact same settings that I have on my inlay video. It is the Garrett From setting, so I didn't change anything. So the pocket is going to be pocketed with a advanced V carve. I used the 1 8 end mill. The step over is 0 0.062. The depth per pass was 0 0.050. The plunge rate was 60, feed rate 80, RPM at 18,000. I used my 60 degree V-bit. The step over was 0 0.008, depth per pass at 0 0.1. My plunge rate was 25, my feed rate was 70, and RPM at 18,000. The starting depth was at the top of the material, and the max depth is 0 0.110. One thing to keep in mind when you do the plug or the male portion part of this inlay is that you do have to mirror the image and create a offset. So I went ahead and did that over here on the side. So let me just go ahead and show you what those settings are. For the male portion or the plug portion, I used a 1 8 end mill again, and the step over is 0 0.087, depth per pass is 0 0.125, the plunge rate is 60, feed rate 80, RPM at 18,000. The 60 degree V-bit settings are step over is 0 0.008, depth per pass is 0 0.1, plunge rate is 25, feed rate 70, RPM at 18,000. The starting depth here is very critical. It is 0 0.09. The max depth is 0.11. I first started with the inlay. If you decide to do the inlay, I do suggest to get the harder part out of the way, which is the inlay. But if you don't decide to do the inlay, that's totally fine. The file that I have online is going to replace the come and take it SVG. And it's just going to replace it with another uh, area that you can pocket for another item. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to do the inlay. Um, it's not necessary. It's going to turn out good either way. Let's go ahead and take a look at those video clips now. Not sure why the pocket and the plug both had this raised piece of material here. I couldn't find anything wrong with the file, so I just remade it and I uploaded this file to Etsy. So if you do purchase the file, you shouldn't have this issue. It was such a thin piece of material though, all I had to do was pull on it and it popped off. Anything left over, I took a chisel to it and just flattened the area out.
I accidentally popped the star off when I was surfacing the male portion the first time, so I just made a single star and let that glue for several hours before trying to surface it away again. When it came to figure out where the charger hole was going to be, I laid the charger in the pocket with my watch attached to ensure that the location kept the watch within the pocket. I then measured to the location of the outer edge of the circle part of the charger. Like I mentioned already at first I only made the hole but after a test fit I really needed the slot for the cable. much better. I'm telling you guys, the X-Fasten tape is really, really great. I'm pulling so hard here that I was afraid I was going to break my glue up. I didn't flood the final product with oil, I just gave it one coat of oil and if I need to add more later on I can do that. And here is the final product, what do you guys think? <laughs> 